Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where today we are still here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Toronto, Toronto, if I was a bit of a local, with this rather lovely Audi RS6 in Nagaro Blue, which belongs to the same collection as all of the BMW M cars and Mercedes and Porsches that I went to visit the other day. Well, today we're going to be heading with Roy, who's been driving us around with this, over towards Young Steel's Ford and Lincoln, who you might remember saved the day with my Shelby GT500 and the issues I had ahead of Gumball 3000. But over there is going to be a rather standout car that comes from the Dare to Dream garage, one of the last new Ford GTs to be delivered with a rather distinct livery paying tribute to the sneakers from that collection which we checked out about six months ago as well. So let's hop into the RS6, head round to the dealer and go take a look at this GT. Roy, how's it going? Good, you? Good to see you. Thank you for driving us around with this lovely RS6 and for, for sure. arranging all the things as usual. For sure, anytime. Absolute legend, especially after six months ago. But the weather today, I can't work it out. A second ago, it was raining. Yeah, that's Toronto is kind of, you'll get five minutes of this, five minutes of that. <laughs> weather changed by 10, 15 degrees. And it happens, it happens. Yeah. But let's hop into this, apt wheels I've just noticed, um, to head over to Young Steels, right? Let's go. To head over to go and see um, this rather standout Ford GT today. This is a pretty good way to get around up here. I mean, we're just before the weather turns nasty. The leaves on the trees are looking fabulous. Yeah. We've got a short little hop. We stopped on the way over towards Young Steels, where earlier this year, you rather saved the day. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I had a short drive. A short drive, meaning like six or seven hours yeah, or something. It's not bad. Each way. Eh, it's like half a day. <laughs> <laughs> when you came to save the day with the GT500 and the uh, fix to the wheels, when you drove a carbon wheel all the way from here at your dealer. Where was it? Albany, I think, right? Yeah, all the yeah. way to Albany, New York, to go and get the um, wheel swapped over, to drive the car with Jason Speed Racer up here to Toronto, only to discover it needed another one. Yeah, well, at least we had the same car. I happened to have four wheels, not just one, so and you were able to take it off. You very kindly popped off some wheels yeah. from a GT500 you had to save the day, to get us on our way to Gumball 3000. Without that, it would not have been possible in the slightest. I'm just hoping it's gonna stay clear. Well, I mean, if it starts raining five minutes later, you'll get some sun, so don't even worry about Straight it. Straight back again. Yeah. Well, huge thanks for driving us around with this very lovely thing that you've borrowed from your friend and for setting up some cool stuff. So let's make our way over towards Young Steels and um, yeah, go check out this GT. Now, the fun thing that a lot of people don't realize, obviously, is that we are technically in the hometown of the Ford GT. Yeah, so it's actually built about 15 minutes away from here. I think you went to see it when yours was being built. Indeed, four years ago in Markham, just yeah. outside of Toronto, technically. Um, and that is where I suppose this exact car was obviously built, but have there, have there been quite a few through here? Uh, through our dealership? Yeah. Uh, honestly, this is our only one. So I think there's been maybe in our area, maybe four or five dealers that got one. Uh, I know a few kind of in the outskirts of Toronto got some, but there really aren't too many around here. No. No. Far more in the US. Obviously, yeah. when we came and we had a look around your showroom before, you had a lineup of three GT500s. You also yeah. had the new GT and an old GT yeah. inside, which was pretty cool. So we still have the two G The two GTs will never go anywhere. I don't think we're ever going to sell them. Yeah. We still have two GT500s, but two different ones that weren't there okay. last time. Uh, <laughs> Mach 1, you know, we'd make sure we have cool stuff in our showroom. Like the cool lineup. Yeah. And this rather striking new GT. Um, you obviously work with the client. Yeah, it's with, a very special client. Yeah, making it look the part. Yeah. And it's something a bit different to anything that we have ever seen. Yeah, there's no 4GT that has a design, anything like this. I've never seen one that's customized to that extent. It's it, it just something you, you have to see in person to really get how far the client kind of came to build the car to his liking. And if you know what this client is about, and you know how, how much it is, it fits his personality, this exact spec. Yeah. Well, we're not too far away yeah. and we will um, go get to check it out. But this is a wonderful way to get around. So big thanks to the owner of this car because yeah, out here, I think it fits the bill perfectly. Oh yeah, it's a great daily, a lot of space, everything. It's a great car to get around for all the all the pretty crazy car stuff we've been doing. We're arriving just as the rain is starting. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? But Ford Lincoln, Young Steels, 
this is where we were with my GT500. Do the wheel swaps, do the alignment. You guys basically gave it a complete run over before we drove, what, two and a half thousand miles down? Yeah, something like that. From here. So, does this mean lurking around here somewhere is the GT? Get ready to look to your left as soon as we pass this Bronco. Around the yellow Bronco, around the oh, M4. I guess the M4. Oh, uh, there we go. Nice. That's crazy. That's really crazy. Wow, well, we better get parked up somehow yeah. and go and take a look at that properly. This is insane. This is a crazy GT. Yeah, it's not, not your <laughs> average one. Not normally like this. So the red, obviously, with the Akrapovich titanium exhaust. Love that with the graphics. Nike Air graphic on the roof. Is that Jordan? Yeah. Jumping so on the back? Jo yeah, so that's Jordan jumping on the back. I don't know exactly which Jordan he based this off, but I know it was a specific one. So he made it look pretty much exactly like the shoe. So the logo's kind of in all the correct places. Yeah. Look exactly like the sneakers. We had a look at the sneakers in the collection when I was out there last time around. Yeah. Obviously the Nike swoosh on the doors. We've got the uh, same wheel design that my car came with. The red Brembo calipers. The design on the hood, on the hood bonnet. Yeah. Not sure what to call it out here. Call it hood. In, 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 in Toronto, you got to call it hood. The hood. Yeah. American style. Exactly. American English rather than English English. Exactly. But with all of the gloss black as well, all the lower parts are in gloss black to yeah. match with the, um, the Nike swoosh. But hey, I can see some cool details inside here. Yeah. Can we grab the keys? Can we have a look inside? Yeah. Back inside. Okay, this is cool, isn't it? Hmm? It's kind of like the cars that are in the collection, shall we say. The Ford yeah. GTs, the pair of GTs, new and old. Um, the Heritage GT3. So this was your last time and these three were your last yes. time? These yes. will probably never leave? They're like to be collected. Then the Mac 1. The Mac 1. So this one is a 600A with the track back. So you get the bigger wing, the wider wheels. And we just actually sold, we had a 700A which comes with the leather seats. This one is with the cloth seats. So it's, but you still get the same performance and everything yeah. as the, as the 700A. And, and then a different carbon uh, track back. If you need another carbon wheel, we have this one. <laughs> Hopefully I don't. Yeah. Hopefully I'm so good. So this has all the options, the stripes, the carbon wheels, full track back, everything. Yeah. And, and then, then the next has a regular one. I don't know if this one was here when you were here or not. It might have been, but this is kind of just more of a base car compared to this fully loaded one. Yeah, there were a trio of them here last time around. Yeah. Those are cool. This is really cool. Remind me what the story with this is. So this is a 1968 Eleanor. So pretty much all Eleanor's were recreations. So from the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, they would take a Mustang Fastback and it would make it into this and they'd make it exactly like the replica from the movie. But these go for crazy money because they only made a certain amount of them. And if you look, you know, just everything in this car looks incredible. It has, this one has about 4,000 miles. And it comes like literally has the NOS button and it's fully functional. It has a oh, NOS really? tank in the back. Wow. I'll grab the keys after and I'll show you. We've actually, we haven't really driven this one too much, but. That's cool. So 500E for Eleanor. That's a beast. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's really? very cool. And then I'll get the keys in a little bit. And I'll show you all the little bits on the inside. The, the NOS one is probably the coolest thing in this car. Yeah. And just a gigantic NOS tank in the trunk. Okay. And then obviously next to it is your silver oh, with blue stripe GT. Yeah, so very cool, very clean spec. We don't have too much carbon bits on this car, um, but this is a car it has a little bit of mileage on it, so we can actually drive it and not feel too guilty about putting mileage on yeah. it. With the blue Alcantara interior. Yeah, blue Alcantara, so very different spec than the one outside. And then obviously if you have one of these, you should probably have one of these beside it, which is the You 06. say that, I don't have one of these yet. Well, I'd I love know. one of those. I think you might need to get a little more views and get one, I don't know. <laughs> A four, Down the line, maybe. Four option car, which means it's a US car because Canadian cars only came as a three option. Really? Which yeah. was the one of the options you couldn't so get? So you couldn't get the, the, uh, the sound system with the speaker in the middle. So okay. you could get the stripes, you can get the BBS fuse, you can get the red uh, brake calipers, but you couldn't get that. You couldn't get the sound system. I never knew that. Interesting. And I don't know if it was because of regulations. It might have been because it blocks uh, some of your view in the back. But Canadian cars, the most you can get is three options. Fascinating. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Okay, so I know you obviously own a Ford GT, so you know the little details inside. So you gotta see this one. Because it's little details, but I've never seen any other one that has these things. I've never seen anything like that. Also the red paddle shifters. The red paddles were on the competition series cars, yeah. I believe. But I've never seen the seats done like that. This obviously has the black leather, the full um, extended carbon fiber interior as well. But that red and white stripe through the center of the seat, that is completely unique with the red seat belts as well. I've never seen that inside. 
Now, I don't know, have, has, have there been any of them at all that have the stripe in the middle of the seat? I, I've never seen that, but yeah, neither have I. I'm interested about it. Obviously, this is where the, um, the four-point harnesses would go. I think yeah. this doesn't have the four-point harness brackets on the back of it. That's really interesting. Obviously, completely brand new and fresh Ford GT with this very race-style steering wheel with all the controls and mode selectors and things. The interior is by Sparco in Italy. Because with my car, we did the dual tone stitch. We did yeah. the red and gold dual tone stitch, yeah. um, which was one of the only cars, I think, if not the first car to have an OEM factory different interior, um, which is really cool to match with the red and gold exterior. Was your car a factory paint or was it a custom paint done for just for you? My car, I think, was the first Ford GT to be painted with a bespoke color stripe, the first okay. one. Okay. which is kind of cool yeah. with the mangold stripes and it was the first one to have bespoke paddles with gold paddles and the first one to have the bespoke stitching yeah <laughs> you can tell i'm quite proud of my gt <laughs> <laughs> and it's a seven it's an 18 right it's an 18 yeah. it's an 18 it was the last one of the first batch of european cars on the outside of the car this is where you have the uh the lock button if you're close enough you just press there and it locks yeah, yeah perfect one. done that's so nice isn't it pretty good spec that's a cool thing this is a really cool thing i just can't believe that collaboration of Nike with the Ford GT fits the collection that obviously you and I both know quite well. Yeah, and the nice thing that I find when someone does a spec like this, especially with the Ford GT, a lot of people are buying them, you know, they might drive it for a year or two and then they're gonna flip it because obviously there's a lot of money to be made. When someone makes it this custom and this much for themselves, you know they're keeping the car forever and they truly bought it because they like the car. They're not trying to get the value out of it. Absolutely, and that's cool because these, obviously when the GTs were brand new, they were flipping for crazy money. Yeah. Um, the fact that Ford made them to go to Le Mans, won at Le Mans in 2016 and the whole story behind it obviously makes the car even more special than otherwise. Well, but I mean, is... what I find with the GTs, which I've, I haven't really experienced in any other car, when you drive normal supercars, it feels like a car was meant for the road. This is the first supercar I really drove that feels like it was designed to be a race car first and then they made it kind of work for the road. I entirely agree as I often talk about on my channel with my car because when you jump into say a Speciale or something it feels like they're just they the road stuff car out. dialed up. Yeah they took stuff out. When you're driving this the thing with the GT is that to get the most out of it you really need to be going Mach 10. You need to yeah. be really flooring it, yeah. pushing it hard, revving it up. Obviously there was so much talk about the engine because yeah. it doesn't have the supercharged V8 of the old one. It's just a that. It's just a twin turbo V6, oh no, blah, 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 blah. But it sounds amazing, especially with the exhaust upgrade that yeah, this car has. And the has. turbo noise that you hear inside the car is, like there's no other car that sounds like that. And again, I'm a big V8 manual type of guy. And I thought these cars maybe will depreciate one day to like half what they were, they were new. But once I drove this, and I drove this after driving the 06, this is the first time I've ever driven a manual car and like the automatic version of it kind of. And I was like, okay, this, the new automatic one is significantly better. It's just a different type of car. But it's quite fun for me because we had my GT500 parked right here. Yeah, so just for you, we parked in the exact same spot. <laughs> same spot right out front. That is super cool to see. Love it. That'll be an epic addition. Hopefully one day I can head back over to Dare to Dream to the garage to go and see it in situ. Yeah. No doubt you'll be seeing it there quite soon. You yeah, deliver it back. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We've got the key now for this. Yeah. So like I was saying before, this car is really, really cool inside. So obviously you got this kind of like classic <laughs> muscle car looking interior. Yeah. But if you notice inside there is a button on the gear shifter and there's a little switch over there that says nitrous. Yeah. So when you flip up the switch, I can show you right there. Move out of the way for a sec. You flip it up and there's a little yeah. toggle switch here. You move <laughs> it up and then you press a button on top of the shifter and the nozzle flies. I think the tank's empty. I don't think anybody's actually going to use this on this car, <laughs> but it's functional and it has it. And then the coolest part of the car is Behind in the, the trunk. Back. back here, what do we have? You open it and <laughs> big NOS tank. <laughs> and all the like actual recreations of the Eleanor, well, I mean, they're all recreations, but all the Eleanors came with this NOS tank and everything is actually functional. Yeah, that's mad. <laughs> it's actually mad. <laughs> one day to try it, maybe. Maybe, maybe one not. day. We've, I think since we got this car, we've driven it a total of half a kilometer okay it's, yeah. it's just not comfortable the one thing i find is the steering wheel digs into your thighs yeah and it's hard to find the right position and when we first got it i think the battery died when it literally got unloaded from the truck the battery died replaced that then literally we got it trucked over here i went to fill up gas in it brought it back and haven't really driven it since done i have a, a craving to one day acquire a 60s mustang of sorts 
It's yeah. like, it's on my wish list. It's definitely um, fun. Once you get it out on the highway and you actually get it going, I think it's a very fun car. And how cool to have something like that yeah. join, in my and case, it's, my It's cool that they're almost even the same. They're very similar specs. It's a bit darker yeah. gray, but it's nice to have kind of the 60s one and the modern take of the same car. It's a cool pairing. It's a very cool pairing. GT500e, GT500s and the other Mustangs and things that are around as well. Yeah. But this, I, I was actually looking again, the wheels on this. Is yeah, they're the the 305s all around. But is, is this the standard Mac 1 wheel? So this is no. the handling package wheel. So the regular ah. one comes with, I think it's the 275 and I think 255 in the front. But once you get the handling pack, you get 305s all around. You get the GT500 style spoiler. Uh, you get um, a front splitter that yeah. sticks out. We haven't installed it yet because the car is brand new. It's in the passenger seat. But you just get a bit more aero, a bit more of everything. And it makes the car look significantly more aggressive. And we just need to rewind for one second. Yeah. You just said 305 at the front. Yeah. 305 at the front. At the front. What? And they're cup twos. What? Yeah, I think it's- Genuinely. I need to like see uh, this. See this to believe it. Where is it? <laughs> Where are we? Here. Um, yeah. 305. 305, 30, ZR19, 19. Sport Cup 2s yeah. on the front if of the Mustang. If it's a little chilly, if it's a little wet, anything like that, just leave this car at home. You're going to understeer straight off the road. Oh yeah, it's just going to, you're going to hydroplane wherever you want to go. Or do what Mustangs do and find a crowd. Well, hopefully we don't get one of these <laughs> at our body shop. Is this a manual? Yeah, yeah this one's a manual. Go. We haven't, honestly, we haven't ordered a 10 speed yet because I feel like the person buying this car isn't going to buy the 10 speed. No. So it just doesn't make sense to order one like no, that. It's about, it's about the manual gearbox. That's nuts. I didn't realize that the handling pack gave you those front tires. Yeah. And then I'm not sure if you know, so the gearbox in this, the manual is not the regular manual from the GT. It's actually the same Tremec gearbox as in the GT350 that's right behind it. Really? Yeah. I so didn't that's why that. it's kind of cool to get a manual in this because it's, it's very different from a regular Mustang GT. Yeah, it's, it's more like this. And the heritage of this, that cream with the blue. Yeah. I really like that. Really like it. It's nice. And this is still delivery mileage. We're not really planning to sell it or anything. We have two of these actually because manual transmission, naturally aspirated, and the sound of this thing is insane. Yeah. You can't replace it again. No. Cool things. Yeah. What a mix of Mustangs. That's awesome. Well, the weather is doing what the weather does. It has now started raining. We knew that was coming, which probably means that this Ford GT is going to get parked up or taken back towards the garage. But what's probably the coolest is that it's actually being driven and enjoyed. We've seen a few people spotting it around Toronto, but such an unusual thing. And it's bold, it's out there, it's crazy. But I think that's one of the coolest ways to do it with a car like this, to make something that's unique. And as I'm standing here looking in through the window, seeing those details inside, just kind of the icing on the cake. What a cool car, what a cool opportunity to come here today to Young Steels, obviously who saved the day for me with the GT500 and to join Roy as well in the RS6. Do check out Drive With Roy, Roy's channel, if you'd like to see more videos from here and also around the United States. But for now, we need to bail out of the rain, go keep ourselves dry, and this car will no doubt be packed up shortly. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.